Salut les grands. Bonjour. Antoine is the gorilla's nurse. He's been looking after them for six years. Les jeunes aiment pour jouer, ils aiment bien, ils aiment bien provoquer. Du coup, euh, c'est beaucoup, beaucoup de gestuels avec les gorilles pour communiquer et le regard. Coucou Chilou. The female he calls Chilou is actually called Sheila. She is currently pregnant. Sheila is 28 years old and has already given birth to four babies. For the nurses, it's a long-awaited moment because her last pregnancy ended in tragedy. Sheila a eu des complications à la dernière mise bas. Le bébé est né. Après, il y avait eu pas mal de de sang, donc on ne sait pas s'il y a eu un problème ou pas parce que pareil, on n'intervient pas du tout dans la dans la mise bas et dans l'élevage des jeunes. Et là, elle n'a pas voulu l'élever. Donc, euh, elle a abandonné le petit. Donc, peut-être qu'il avait un problème et qu'elle, elle le savait. Donc, malheureusement, il n'a pas survécu. Donc, là, on, va, on espère que tout va bien se passer. Here are the images of what Antoine hopes to experience with Sheila. We can see a scene shot in Washington Zoo where a gorilla mother delivers her baby on her own. The nurses can only encourage her. Good girl, Kalea. Yeah, good girl. Now we got a baby. Yay. Oh my goodness. Good girl, We have got a baby. Good girl, Kalea. Okay. Okay. Good girl, Miss Kalea. mother immediately shows signs of affection for her baby. This bond is essential for its survival. A bond that Sheila will have to create too. With the five sets of twins that she's had here, um, we lost a set of twins. And then we had a set for about a month and then one of them died, unfortunately. Scamp was originally a twin but unfortunately she lost the other one. It was quite healthy, I think, until about 10 days old, and then it just dropped down dead. We just came in one morning and he was on the floor. Maybe if they've jumped and knocked him and he's fallen, that's, you know, what's most likely to have happened, really. They're both clinging on well at the minute, so hopefully we can get two healthy little babies. When the babies are born, they weigh about 16 grams, so you can imagine just how small and delicate they are. There's always risks. The likelihood of both surviving is quite low, so you're always a bit scared. Keepers think Scamp's twin fell to his death, so pushing the twins off before they're ready could be dangerous. Hi, guys. Where is everyone? Every morning, the team need to check up on them. Yesterday, it took me 15 minutes to find all of them. Hello. The babies are that small, you kind of just have to look for maybe a little bump or something. Today, there seems to be one missing. Audrey's definitely got one. I want to try and make sure we see them both. When I walked in, I saw all four adults and one baby. In the past, we've lost them, so there's always that part of you that's like, oh, are they OK? Are they all still around? Well, you've got them both. Hi. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> I see two tails and two heads. We're all good. We have them all. Baby orangutan Tombol is also thriving. As the months are going on, you see his character developing more now, and he doesn't seem quite a confident little chap, quite like chilled out, and he doesn't seem too phased by things. Hi, guys. Hello, Tombol. Now eight months old, Tombol's increasing maturity seems to have improved relations with the gibbons. 
There's definitely a bond there between Tombol and the Gibbon. I don't know how he really sees them. I don't know whether he sees them as friends or his like extended family, but they ha he has a lovely relationship with them at the moment. Even Mum Suriki seems to approve of the friendship. It's really quite sweet. There's, um, there's been lots of nice interactions. And Suriki allowing that to happen, which is probably the more unusual aspect to it. Suriki could have freaked out, but she hasn't done that. She's just been, OK, it's a gibbon. Yeah, no problem. Um, and therefore, you've got this nice relationship building up between the Gibbons and Tombow. And I'm quite confident in those friendly, playful interactions will just develop as he gets older. I think you feel a sense of pride where this adorable little orangutan will grow up to be this amazing looking adult male orangutan who will then go on to have his own offspring. It's just amazing to think, you know, years and years will go and that line will carry on. There's a rush of excitement over at the macaques. Dominant female Lisa has hidden herself away to get some privacy. She's going into labour. Most primates, they'll give birth at night, but Lisa, our dominant female, Literally around about midday, it was about 12 o'clock, she gave birth to a healthy little baby. Both the animals and keepers wait for a glimpse of the group's first baby in two years. New babies are uh, massively important to any primate social structure, so it's a massively exciting thing. It's, it's what it's all about, really. After an hour, Lisa is ready to introduce her newborn to the family. It's quite a privilege to be able to see that. It's quite rare. So it's fascinating to be able to watch the whole group's reaction to that. It was just amazing and such, such a privilege to watch. It's been five days since Sulawesi macaque Lisa gave birth to baby Han. Looking after him is a full-time job, as it is for any mum. All primates, ourselves included, they will caretake the offspring and breastfeed up until the point where they can begin weaning. They'll carry that baby with them at all times. There are plenty of relatives keen to help Lisa out. Family is also important, so the group plays an integral role in making sure that those babies are safe and looked after also. If a baby's there, everybody's fascinated and everybody wants to, to meet that new arrival. It's a bit like people where you have everyone come round your house in the space of two days, but obviously they're in the enclosure and they can't shut a door and go, thank God no one's coming round anymore, we're not inviting anyone else round. They're not delicate with them at all. They pull on their arms, they pull on their legs. They just are so inquisitive when they find a new baby. But there's one macaque who isn't queuing up to help out. Dad Mamasa. Mamasa's... He's a good dad, as in he did his role and he looks after the group, but I wouldn't say he was a massively involved dad. He's definitely not going to be changing nappies, cleaning bombs. With an absent father and overbearing in-laws, Lisa doesn't know where to turn. 